Hello and welcome to this Atoms tutorial where we are going to be importing a single piston crankshaft assembly into Atoms and assigning material properties to the imported components presented by ESA Corp and brought to you by MSC Software. Here is a flowchart of the topics that we will be covering in our piston crankshaft assembly video series. In this video, we will be looking at the topics outlined in black. Starting off in SOLIDWORKS, the assembly and its components will be described to give a general idea of how the components are connected and the functionality of each one in the assembly. Then the assembly will be exported as a pair solid and imported into atoms. And finally, in atoms, we will go into detail on assigning material properties to the imported components. Please check out our other videos where we will cover the rest of the topics outlined in red, including applying connectors and motions in atoms, meshing in apex, and flexible body integration. To give you an idea of what we'll be working towards in the video series, here is a quick simulation of our completed piston crankshaft assembly demonstrating rigid and flexible body dynamics. But first, we would have to start off in SOLIDWORKS. As you can see here, we have our single piston assembly modeled from a plain radial engine consisting of nine different components. Starting at the bottom, we have our crankshaft that's going to be connected to the connecting rod and to interface those two metal parts together we're going to have a lower bushing that's going to be made of brass and for the same concept and same reasons we have an upper bushing as well and that's going to interface between the connecting rod and the piston pin and that piston pin is going to go inside of the piston head where it's going to be locked down and tied with these two piston plugs and if you look at the top of our piston head You'll notice four different piston rings. That now that we have all of our components, we can see what it looks like once all together. So you see everything attaches correctly, and this is what we want to mimic in atoms later on. But for now, we want to bring this into atoms. I'm going to go to File, Save As. Make sure you change the Save As type to Pair Solid or XT file and note the directory that you're saving it in so you know where to import it from and we're going to save as so now that we have our part exported out of SOLIDWORKS we're going to go into Adams view we're going to start a new model make sure our model names input it um, our gravity is actually going to be the negative x but we'll be able to change that later so we'll do other for now we're going to stay our units consistent with um, SOLIDWORKS we're going to do IPS and just make sure it's in the correct working directory we're going to click OK and right away it's going to note that our gravity setting is not in the negative y so we're going to do negative x and do ok and to import our part we're going to go to file import and for file type we're going to change that to pair solid files to read to open up a window you're going to want to double click double left click and it should pop up in the window find our file and we're going to open it and for model name we're just going to keep it the same so double click and just select it the same as what we named the um, mo model that we opened up in atoms to be click OK now that we have our piston assembly imported it correctly into atoms view we can double check to see if all the bodies imported incorrectly and they did and just as a side note you can if the wireframe is not to your liking you can change its appearance by holding shift and clicking S and that's going to change it to a solid and if we want to look at each solid we notice that none of the material properties carried over so in order to edit the material properties and assign a material property to each part which is going to be crucial throughout the analysis we're going to have either double click on the part or you can also click right and hit modify as well and there are several categories you can change we're just concerned about mass properties for now uh, define mass by you can either do the user input for right now I'm just going to use some of the base um, materials that they have in the library in Adams view I'm gonna double click this window and for the crankshaft I'm gonna sign steel for it and once I hit apply you can see that it pops up with this piston crankshaft center of mass and that's just gonna be based off solely off the geometry now that our mass is assigned you can go into the other windows to view the properties of that mass in case you want to do your own density or a different user input for the material you're specifically looking at but just to keep things simple we're just going to keep using the library materials in Adams view 
Uh, we're going to click OK since we're done with that component. We're going to move on to the piston rings. And those are going to have iron material. So we're going to go down to geometry again. And material type. Double click material type. And click uh, cast iron. It's going to be the closest one we have. Click apply. And that's going to assign that as well. And you can see that each center of mass is popping up as we go along and why that's important is because rigid body dynamics is based off of center of masses so a lot of the constraints and connectors and motions that we're going to be applying on the next video are going to be based off of these different center of masses and that's why it's important to assign materials to your assembly once you import it in we're going to move on to the next um, piston ring go to geometry and material type it's going to be the same for all piston rings so we're going to go through these fairly quickly uh, define mass by same thing geometry and material type we're going to do cast iron again and it got a little out of order here but we're just going to go down the piston ring the last piston ring we're going to set that as cast iron as well and now for the piston pin plugs you can notice that when I click them it highlights the component in the window if we hit Z, we can zoom in just to get a better view. So we know what material we're messing with. Um, you can also hold Shift and S, like I mentioned before, and to get a different type of view of that. But I'm going to set those to uh, set those to an aluminum material. You see how these are popping up as we go along. Uh, for the piston pin, we're actually we're going to make that a steel. So I'm just double clicking, or you could click this again, like I mentioned before. Geometry and material type, and those center of masses are going to solely be off of the geometry and shape of the object. Modify for the piston. And that piston head is going to be aluminum. So now we're looking at the rod bush upper. And you can notice when we click these, it kind of gives you an x-ray view of the component you're looking at. So for the upper bushing, that's going to be attached to the piston head. We're going to click modify to change the material properties. And we're just going to select brass, make these uh, brass bushings. Click OK. The same thing for the lower. Double click that. Geometry material type. Brass as well. Click OK. And finally, for our articulate rod or our connecting rod, we're going to choose to make that out of steel. OK. And there you have it. All the components are assigned to a different material. But that concludes the end of this video. Thank you for watching.